one, two, three fantastic columns in the churchyard here of St Nicholas in Leicester, a cancelled Roman town. Cancelling people is a very popular pastime in 2023, so I'm told, so uh, possibly a cancelled Roman town is going to do well for the old likes and subscribes. Once again, we have the Romans very cleverly incorporating the Iron Age tribal system into their occupation here. This was the heartland of the Coriel Tarvi, and I'll put the Romanized name of the town down there to avoid having to say it. Leicester is one of two centres in this part of the Midlands occupied by the Coriol Tarvi and then subsequently adopted by the Romans. That's a friendly way of saying occupied, isn't it? And Old Sleaford did sort of wane away, but here Leicester in Roman times was a really important place. Oh, and there's a call out here to get interactive with the channel. This Roman policy of co-opting the tribal structure into the occupation is one that fascinates me. And what I want to find out about and can't is what happened 370 years later when the Roman army withdrew. All of these towns were still carrying the name of these Iron Age tribes. Was there any lingering memory or structure around at that time or had it been completely forgotten about? If you know anything about that, please leave it in the comments or send us uh, an email. We might even invite you to come and take part. And unlike uh, other Roman towns that we visited in the Roman Gazette, the uh, Roman remains here in Leicester are all concentrated in one area. Despite the fact that it was a walled Roman town of some 100 acres, all that we have left today to have a look at is here in this one area. Having a look at it today in 2023 is not easy. The most visible and dramatic part of Roman Leicester that survives today is called the Jury Wall and we're going to talk about that uh, in a little bit. But today this is about as close as we can get to it. We are well and truly disbarred from the Jury Wall. The site was acquired by the council back in 2016 and has effectively been shut from public access since 2017. It was meant to reopen this year in 2023, but uh, by my calculation, they've only got a few weeks left. Actually recount, it's four Roman columns. There's another one there. Be part of history, take a look at our progress. That's what it says there's precious little sign of any progress in there. This is about as close as we can get to the old Jury Wall Museum itself, a listed structure built, I think, in 1961. It is completely empty in there, so where all the Roman goodies are, I don't know. Uh, the things we're not going to be able to have a look at today include a milestone from, I think, Hinckley, dated to around 120 AD, some amazing mosaics, including the peacock pavement and some fabulous uh, wall plaster that was discovered in 1958. Some of you may posit that the cancellation of Roman Leicester is down to the name of the wall, the Jury Wall. It's a bit sensitive, isn't it? What do we know about it? The first reference of that name is 1665, but it's very unlikely that it has anything to do with Leicester's small Jewish community, which of course was reduced to zero by Simon de Montfort in uh, 1231 when he evicted them all. The probable origin of this name, Jury Wall, comes from the fact that in medieval times, jurors met in the churchyard next door. And we've got just a simple corruption of that word. In fact, my predecessor as an antiquarian, William Stukeley, labelled it on his map in 1722 as the Jury Wall, J-U-R-Y. The Jury Wall is one of the largest and highest chunks of surviving Roman masonry here in the UK. Somewhat similar to the old works that uh, we saw in post-Roman city at Roxeter. Well, about 70 of you saw that. 
And all you continuity freaks will love that its survival was because it was incorporated into the first iteration of the church that you can see behind me by the Anglo-Saxons. And then by the time we get to Victorian times, it looked like this sort of overlay here, a fantastic painting by John Fletcher, showing buildings sort of built into the arched recesses of the wall. All of those surrounding buildings were cleared away in the 1920s, including the demolition of a factory with a plan to build a public swimming pool. And of course, ironically, what they found underneath that was the Roman bathhouse. And it's a unique Roman bathhouse in the UK in that they had his and hers changing rooms. Ahead of their times in the Roman period, Leicester was ahead of the times in the 1930s. The excavations were led by a Kathleen Kenyon. And as I've said that, I realized I know someone called Kenyon. I'll have to check with them to see if they're related. It doesn't matter. Anyhow, she discovered the bathhouse and that led to the understanding that the jury wall was actually the wall of the palestra, the gym, and not the forum basilica. Unfortunately, the footpath behind the wall here is closed for health and safety reasons. Uh, the excavations in the 1930s led them to the understanding that the wall was built in 125 AD. I think they could do with finding a little bit of that. Now, it's easy to be a great big internet critic, isn't it? Uh, but looking at this footage, I do find myself going all a bit holier than thou. To see this incredibly important Roman site like this is pretty depressing. You know, if they didn't have the funding to undertake the refurbishment in 2017, why close the place? Surely it was better to have some dough coming in and to allow gazetteers to gazette. I don't want to go all Richard Vobes here, but it does make you wonder if this is all part of the anti-classical movement, that conspiracy to make us forget about Roman Britain and see history as only about World War II. We should clarify that we knew it was like this. It is not an example of YouTuber does inadequate research, but it was a lot more difficult than anticipated. One. We didn't know that they'd now shut off the path behind the jury wall as well. Two, I'd been to a wedding the day before and was feeling a little bit fragile. And three, Mrs. WC21 UK Productions Limited was waiting in some godforsaken NCP car park. We had to rely on fake drone version one. It was just way too risky to fly V2 uh, over the site in case it decided to do its little trick of suddenly landing and refusing to move. This was a very important trading centre back in the Roman day. The marketplace was actually as big as the Forum and archaeologists have determined that the Forum itself was marked out in the ground uh, but building didn't actually start for some time. Presumably a bit like this wretched museum refurb, they were just waiting for the cash to come through. I think on balance, to sound all corporate, the continuity was probably the best thing about this visit. Trying to work out how the jury wall worked in the context of the first Saxon church was pretty difficult, but finding those Roman columns still knocking about after nearly 2,000 years was really great. And there is plenty of Roman stonework in the current church uh, too, which I think dates to about 880, something like that. The church and the wall and the museum are all sort of stranded in a 60s utopia of ring roads, and one couldn't help but fume a little bit to think about what was lost when these underpasses were built. It seems to me that they're a bit obsessed with Richard III here in Leicester at the moment and they're neglecting their Roman legacy, which is a shame. I hope you've enjoyed the video nonetheless. Please like and subscribe and we'll be back with another video next week.